So team keep it clean, man. We got something from the Baltimore Ravens that shocked me like crazy, and I was just completely wrong about it. And we're going to talk about it shortly. Before we do, I got to say I appreciate everybody that checked out our interview with Lamar Jackson's first ever personal coach, first ever QB coach, Coach Van. He known Lamar since he was young. He was the one that first had Lamar Jackson playing quarterback, man, and he made him prove himself to play quarterback. Because Lamar said he wanted to play quarterback. Coach Van said, all right, throw the ball 20 yards. And Lamar did it, and the rest was history. He was somebody that was with Lamar when he got his Heisman. He was with Lamar in Little League. He was with Lamar when he was, got the MVP, when he got drafted, all of that stuff, man. So he is somebody that is very close to Lamar Jackson, very special to Lamar Jackson. He's a very special person, too. So I, I just enjoyed talking to him. I love talking to him. He was super, super cool, super, super patient. Y'all check that interview out when you get a chance. Because I know when you get a notification, you say, oh, new video. Okay, cool. And that video is an hour and 20 minutes long. You're like, oh, okay, I don't know if that's so cool. That's something that you got to prepare yourself for. Because you just, you just can't click on no hour and 20 minute video and watch the whole thing straight. So I get it. Anybody that didn't watch it yet, it's okay. It'll be there. It ain't going nowhere. But please check it out when you can because it has a lot of great stuff in there from him. He, he was just... He was amazing, like straight up. And I appreciate y'all. I've seen the comments on there, y'all showing support and love for it. Thank you, thank you very, very much. It's, he was amazing, like straight up, man. But anyway, with the Baltimore Ravens, they dropped the bombshell on us today because we got a depth chart. We got a depth chart from Baltimore Ravens PR team, and there was a big shakeup that I did not see coming. So first, the quarterbacks. Lamar Jackson and Josh Johnson No surprises there At running back Derrick Henry's listed as a first string Justice Hill second string Rasheen Ali third string No surprises there Fullback Patrick Ricard Cool Tight ends Mark Andrews Likely Charlie Cola Cool Wide receiver Zay Flowers Rashad Bateman Nelson Aguilar Tylen Wallace Okay cool We get that But here Here is where I was like Whoa Okay that ain't what we've been hearing But Hey That's why you just gotta wait it out At left tackle Ronnie Stanley, starting left guard, Andrew Voorhees, starting center, Tyler Linderbaum, starting right guard, Daniel Falele, starting right tackle, it's not Roger Rosengarden, it's not, it's Patrick McCarry. so that, that is, I, when I saw that today, I said, whoa, because so many of us, me, have penciled in Roger Rosengarden, oh, that, that's going to be our starter, he's going to be the guy, that the rookie is going to be starting from jump. That's him. Raven said, nope, not at all. And so many times we, we've continued to hit a Baltimore Raven. And, of course, this could be subject to change depending on how the offensive line performs. But so many times we've talked about this offseason, especially recently, especially within the recent week. We talked about how Ravens, they, they love Pat McCarry as sort of that sixth man. Eric DaCosta even came out and said the exact same thing in his press the other day. So we like, oh, yeah, yeah, Patrick McCarthy, he's he going to come off the bench. And then we even got questions from subscribers. I remember somebody asked about it, like, why is Patrick McCarthy not starting? And I said, well, hey, they, the Ravens like him as their sixth man. And maybe, like John Harbaugh says, hey, the best five are going to play. The best five starting offensive linemen are going to play. And maybe they didn't look at Patrick McCarthy like he was one of the best five. But according to this new fresh depth chart, he is one of the best five. So when I saw that, I, I said, whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay, but this does, uh, uh, of course, confirm also with uh, Daniel Filele and Andrew Voorhees that those two are the starters uh, at guard for the Baltimore Ravens, too. Whew. Also on the defensive side of the ball, no, no, no shockers really here. Justin Matabike, Michael Pierce as starters, Travis Jones, Adafi away. Uh, Roquan Smith, Trent Simpson, no, no shockers there. Kyle Vinoy at cornerback, Brandon Stevens, Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Williams, Kyle Hamilton, no shockers there at all. That's everything that we all expected. Uh, special teams, Jordan Stout, Justin Tucker, uh, no shockers there. Long snapper, Nick Moore. Then a kick returner, uh, Deontay Hardy and Justice Hill. Punt returner, Deontay Hardy, Tylen Wallace, no shockers there either. So, the, again, the only one was at the right tackle position, and that like that really threw me for a loop. Now, Team Keep It Clean, I know I ain't said this in a long time, but y'all been doing it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on. Regular season is starting like now. We here. Game is in, what, five days? Five days is crazy. Five. <laughs> this is five days away, man. We write this. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs>
<laughs> it's five days away, man. We are so close, man. But make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on so when we drop a video, when we're doing a live stream during a game, y'all don't miss out. And leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel like crazy. Before we continue, because we got plenty more to cover, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Now, you know it's Team Keep It Clean over here all day, every day. And that's not just for the videos, that's a lifestyle. But sometimes, in order to keep it clean, you got to go a little above and beyond. This video is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the global men's lifestyle brand that is revolutionizing the landscape of men's grooming. Manscaped stands as pioneers who showcase their enduring supremacy and providing top-tier quality and unparalleled value. Today, we embark in a journey into their latest treasure chest, the performance package 5.0 ultra featuring the lawnmower 5.0 ultra electric trimmer i know y'all remember what our guy mark ingram said look at the details now this is what you're here to see prepare for grooming precision on a legendary scale with the lawnmower 5.0 ultra this trimmer elevates your grooming game with its next gen dual skin safe blade heads now accompanied by an upgraded trimmer blade and an interchangeable foil blade for enhanced performance. So you can level up your grooming adventure, bid farewell to those bothersome nose hairs with the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra, complete with this Weed Whacker 2.0 ear and nose hair trimmer. Elevate your self-care saga with the Crop Soother and Crop Preserver. This dynamic duo is meticulously crafted to keep you refreshed and revitalized from dawn till dusk, just like a character's HP bar. Now hold up, it doesn't stop there. When you purchase the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra, you get two free gifts. Starting off, we present the Boxers 2.0. These are no run off the mill boxers. They are tailored for the pinnacle of comfort and style, and they feature the jewel pouch. So along with keeping it clean, you keep it fresh too. Manscaped also threw in their Shed 2.0. It's like your grooming command center, a realm to organize all your gear and prepare for your epic quests. Join the 10 million men worldwide who've put their confidence in Manscaped for all things grooming and hygiene. Head over to manscaped.com and get your hands on a performance package 5.0 Ultra today. When you use my promo code ENGRAVEN, you'll get 20% off plus free international shipping plus two free gifts. That's a lot. Again, that's 20% off plus free shipping plus two free gifts with promo code ENGRAVEN at manscaped.com. Fellas, I guarantee you'll love it. So shout out to Manscaped. They over here helping us keep it clean. Now, we are at my favorite part of these videos where we get to hear from y'all. Team Keep It Clean. If you're a Team Keep It Clean patron, you want to be a part of sending in your question and have it featured in the video, just send it directly on Patreon. If you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. And if you don't want to, that is perfectly fine as well. Everybody else, you can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com if you would like your question featured in the video. First question came from a Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy Derek. He said, Engraven, how are you? I'm good. I'm really good, especially with us getting closer to the season. I hope you're doing even better, though. He also said, I hope your week is going good. LOL, my week, man. Where do I begin? Monday, I had a huge nail in my tire. I had to get it replaced Wednesday. Oh, man, because when I was leaving the mall, I got a flat tire. Oh, that flat tire is like car problems. Those can be some of the worst because there's, there's never a good time for a car problem they always come at the worst times and i know that sounds so basic because like when is ever a good time to have a car problem it is isn't but still they are so annoying but anyway he said I, then i received a letter in the mail about having to get my windshield fixed or else my tags will be suspended oh man that's that's how they operating like that up there oh my goodness it oh that's crazy then he said i found out that tuesday night uh and the date of the suspension was this friday august 30th oh boy you had to put a rush delivery on that thing Wow, that's, whew. Then he said, I got my windshield replaced the day before the date of the suspension. LOL, to anyone viewing, listening, uh, allow my experience to be a reminder. Don't beat around a bush for stuff like that. Fines and suspensions are not worth it. Anywho, let's get into it. Hey, <laughs> you right. Um, I am somebody that is a huge procrastinator. I, I am a big time procrastinator. There will be stuff that I need to get done. I know in advance that I need to get it done and I will wait and wait and wait and wait. Something that I read a while back, we're going to get into your question. Well, something that I read a while back, it said that with people who procrastinate, if they keep getting away with it, then they're going to keep on doing it. So anyway, he says, why does it always seem like when the Ravens have this star studded spectacular season, 2019 and 2023, ironically, the 49ers have a good season, and we often play each other. We won both matchups. However, why do they seem to reach the Super Bowl, but we don't? And Niner fans, ha-ha, point and laugh at us just for this to happen. Lurking in the corner with a grin and a smirk on their faces and gleaming their eyes and hands are up together. Pat, Andy, Kelsey are plotting and scheming because they usually emerge victorious 
in the end. As a Ravens fan, this is just so annoying and frustrating. In the past, we had Joe Flacco, who he was in 2008 to 2012, was a lethal weapon in the postseason. N not from 2008. Not from jump. They won now. But Joe Flacco was not playoff Joe Flacco in 2008. It took him a couple years. But once he got there, oh, it was game over. But anyway, he said... Um, that that postseason uh, version of Joe would give Mahomes a run for his money. Still, the problem remained, especially after Ray and A had left in 2013 and 2018-ish. Till Lamar took over, Flacco could never do enough in the regular season to get us there. But what he could do when he got us there, we knew. Now into Lamar Jackson, two-time MVP, three-time Pro Bowler, the man, the myth, the legend, El Freaky. My inner Mark Ingram coming out. Uh, great in the regular season, but playoffs... Like regular season Flacco, it's been inconsistency. Shaking my head. One QB could wreak havoc once he got there, Joe Flacco. However, the regular season, he could never get over the hump post the Super Bowl 47 win. Now we have a quarterback who wreaks havoc in the regular season, gets us there, no problem. However, uh, once, however, once the results are not so pretty. Yeah, the results certainly are not so pretty at all. Um, and we tired of seeing the same results, but for the same reasons. They need to change the reasons. And I think if they change the reasons that we've been seeing the same results, then the results will change because of that. And what I mean when I say that is something that I've meant when I've said it before. And we all know, Ravens, play your game. Play winning football. Whenever you do that, you win in the playoffs. Simple as that. So, do it. Next question came from my guy Javon. He said, what's the next move? Who's up next? What's up, Engraven, my brother? First off, I would like to say I love this channel, brother. Hey, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. I love you. He said, uh, when the news for Snoop dropped, I found myself checking every five... <laughs> I appreciate this, man. He said, I, I found myself checking every five minutes for my notification saying, Team Keep It Clean is in the building. LOL. Yeah, I'm that type uh, of supporter of the channel. Uh, but I have a few questions. First, do you believe Josh Johnson stays at the number two spot with Snoop coming home? That is such a great question. That is such a great question. Um, that, is, that is such a great question. I think they... Mm, because how, you can't really analyze like... Uh, you, you can't really analyze the, the, the QB2 position. Well, you can't in practice a little bit, but that's different, man. Because I would say, like, all right, they'll, they'll want to see if Josh Johnson plays or what, excuse me, or whatnot. They want to see how he plays. But he ain't going to play because Lamar going to be playing. So they ain't going to get to see him. I think they could because I believe that Tyler Huntley being on a practice squad is a much, not maybe much, but is a significantly more – uh, of a risk that he would get plucked off the practice squad than if a Josh Johnson was on a practice squad. So I could see them soon enough switching the roles, like having releasing Josh Johnson and then putting Tyler Huntley on an active roster and then putting Josh Johnson back on a practice squad. Because, again, like, like who's going to take Tyler Huntley, though, and add him to the active roster? Somebody could. Again, if they had a, a, an injury at quarterback. But I, I think either way, they probably both safe there. But it's a little bit more of a risk if Tyler Huntley's on the practice squad than Josh Johnson. Anyway, he also said, uh, in my opinion, he played decent in the preseason, so he deserves a spot. However, I think about game schemes. If Josh had to step ever step in for Lamar, the entire playbook changes. However, with Snoop, there will be very little tweaks. I disagree. I disagree because we've seen when Snoop has come in for Lamar, and it has been completely different playbooks. We, we, well, we've seen it. So... I disagree with that. Now, under Todd Munkin, could it be different? Hopefully, we never even have to even talk about this. Like, no, because we know Lamar going to be straight. So, we, we ain't got to worry about that. But we have seen it before. It, wasn't under, it, was, it was under a different offensive coordinator. Now, it was under Greg Roman versus Todd Munkin. But it, the playbook completely, ch everything changed. Uh, but anyway, he said, second question. Who on our defensive line has the best opportunity to replace the production of Jade? <laughs> Of Jadavian Clowney. Um, I'm straight up, I, I would say, um, I would say Adafi Owe. Oh, look, he, he, continued. he said, I'm almost sure you're going to say Ajabo. No, only reason, because you said the production of Jadavian Clowney. So what I take as production, obviously he got, what, nine, nine and a half sacks last year. That's part of it, but he was also a really good run defender. That's why I would say Adafi Owe. That's why I would say him. David Ajabo, in my opinion, right now, he's not really strong enough in run defense to 
uh, replace the production that Jadavian Clowney brought. Sack-wise, oh yeah, because again, I, I think that David Ajabo is going to be out there as a, a passing down specialist, as a, as a pass rusher. Just they're going to bring him out. He's going to be like a special occasion. They're going to bring him out for a special occasion for one or two reasons, either second and long or third and long. <laughs> Other than that, man, yeah. But anyway, he said, if Away can stay healthy and truly use his speed off the line to his advantage, I believe and hope that he surpasses Clowney's sack count from last year. Oh, we, we all do. Oh, we, we, yeah, we would all be for that. He said, thanks in advance, brother, and peace and love to you and your family. And of course, I can't forget peace and love to this beautiful family. Team, keep it clean. Appreciate this a lot, man. Next question came from my guy, Ricky Williams. And again, could he be the previous Baltimore Ravens running back from 2011, Ricky Williams? We may never know. Anyway, he said, Angry Raven, I know you don't like lists, but what do you think about this one? No, no, no. Don't get me wrong. I like reviewing lists. I don't mind looking at lists. I just don't like creating them myself. I hate when people, hey, who your top five? There's who your top ten? That <laughs> no, that, that's not for me. That, I let somebody else have that conversation. But I, I review a list all day, every day. But I appreciate you. Anyway, he said, what do you think about this one? In my opinion, this list is comical and head scratching. I'm just going to leave this here. And he said, this is Ricky Williams, and just like Hollywood for week one, I'm out. Why you got to do all got Hollywood like that? Why you got to do anyway? This list is the top 10 Super Bowl contenders, according to Kyle Long. Number one, the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay, respect it. They've been winning all the Super Bowls, so you got to put them up there. Number two, the Detroit. The Detroit. The Detroit. Okay, they did make to the NFC Championship game last year, and they had it for a while, but then, of course, the 49ers came back. Number three, the 49ers. That, I respect that because 49ers, it seemed like they play in a Super Bowl like Every year. If it ain't every year, it seems like every other year. They're always there. They're always in the NFC Championship and Super Bowl. They don't win, but Green Bay Packers. All right. Here's where we start to get. Look, if you okay, Green Bay Packers, Bengals. Okay, Bengals been there recently. They ain't been the healthiest, but they've been there recently a couple years back. They lost, which we were great, very grateful about. Because if had they not lost, oh, my goodness. We, we wouldn't be able to say nothing to them. We wouldn't be able to say, well, I mean, we'd be able to say, oh, we got two. You only got one, but still, recent. Recent, we wouldn't be able to say nothing, but we glad that we could talk all the talk that we, we can because they win. The Texans, mm. putting the Texans over the Ravens uh, again. That was last year, but still, Texans are a very loaded team. Very, very loaded. Um, they're gonna be fun. I think they're gonna be really good. Uh, the Bills, Bills, mm. the Eagles. Okay, Eagles. Hey, they go some Ravens. They go them Ravens. And then the Jets. Oof, Jets. They put us next to, okay, the Eagles. I ain't going to problem with Eagles, but the Jets? They put us next to the Jets? We've seen, and I get he got hurt, but we, we've seen four plays from Aaron Rodgers. Four, one, two, three, four plays from Aaron Rodgers on that team. But mm, I would um, think that the Ravens would be higher, but maybe Kyle Long, he just, he just really not a believer in the Baltimore Ravens. And, and I get it. I, I get it because Ravens, they got a lot to prove. They got a lot to prove because it's like like we, we were just talking about in the previous question um, from, from Derek. Like the Ravens, they'll be playing lights out football in the regular season. They are this dominant team in the regular season. And then postseason, it's like, who are these guys? Who is this to insert in some games? Well, in the biggest game, well, in the games that they lose. Because, it's, again, they don't lose playing that game. They lose being somebody who they have no business being. It's like Ravens. Something that a lot of us were taught from when we were super, super young. Be yourself. Don't try to be nobody else. Don't try to be like nobody. Be yourself. If the Ravens can get that through their head, then this list, they'll be able to look at this list after the season and say, ha, we did that just for you. And why are they holding up a trophy too?